TSC reporter Richie Sloan is here with us today. How's it going, Richie? Hey guys, I'm here at PigFest and I've done a lot of research. It looks like you have some of that research all over your face. Oops, you caught me. But yeah, I do have a lot of information for you. We can't wait to see what you found out. Take it away, Richie. An annual tradition was born in 1997 when PigFest was first held here in Lakeland. Then, in 2004, there was a kids' barbecue contest added, and in 2008, officials added Friday night festivities. But this year at PigFest, there's something for everyone. There's NASCAR simulators, live music, and even a kids' playground sponsored by Legoland. But the star of the show is the barbecue, and PigFest has been recognized as one of the biggest barbecue events in the U.S. Teams come from all over the country to compete in four categories, chicken, pork, brisket, and ribs. Over the past 14 years, PigFest has helped raise over half a million dollars for local charities. And this year, the organizers have teamed up with the Junior League of Greater Lakeland to try and donate even more for those in need in our community. Richie Sloan, TSC News. Hello there, Lee Gibson. I'm Richie Sloan here with the latest information in system technology. Today's headlines, a new host of studies that show that playing video games might actually be good for you. Let's have a look. However, the subject is still up for debate. Many scientists and researchers, including Richard Gallagher, director of the Parenting Institute at NYU's Children's Study Center, have noticed an increasingly large number in children and teens playing violent video games. He thinks the video games are more likely to cause the gamers to have more aggressive thoughts, actions, and attitudes. So tell me, LG, where do you stand on this subject? Do you think video games are helpful or harmful? Harmful because it doesn't help my grade. How long on average do you think that you play video games a day? An hour and a half, two hours. How long on average do you think you play video games? Probably about two or three hours. Why do you think you play that long? Because I want to show that I'm better than everyone else. Do you think video games are helpful or harmful? I think video games are helpful because it helps increase your reflexes. How long on average do you play video games? Four to five hours a day. No, 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 I lost. Lost, fiddlesticks. Well, G. It seems moderation is the key if deciding if video games are helpful for you or not. However, if you do play the occasional video game, or two, like myself, then I'm pretty sure you're familiar with some popular video game terms. I call them, speak like a geek. Researchers continue to study the effects of video games and their behavioral influences on our lives. For more information, talk to your parents or a professional resource nearby. Richie Sohn, TSC News. Hello, Lee Gibson. I'm here in downtown Lakeland where pumpkins are checking in for surgery. That's right, the third annual Dr. Scissorhands exhibition is backed by popular demand. These talented doctors unselfishly gave their time and talent to help raise money for VISTI, who will use all donations to help those in need in our community. Richie Sloan, TSC News. Hey, Lee Gibson. I'm here at the 29th annual Snowfest held here at the Lake Mirror Complex. Every year this event is made to give the people of Florida a little bit of snow in downtown Lakeland. But every year, people come here bundled up like Eskimos, all cozy and warm. But this year, I've joined the Polar Bear Club, and I'm going to show you that I'm going to go on there in nothing but a t-shirt and shorts. It's so cold. I'm out of here. Richie Sloan to the TSC news. Friday. I was thinking, since it's super cold outside, why don't we just stay inside and play Black Ops all day? What a perfect date! What a perfect date? You think sitting on the couch all day getting fat is a perfect date? No, I don't think so. Plus, I don't even know what Black Ops is. You don't know what Black Ops is? Surprising! And you're my girlfriend. Do you even know any of the latest video games? No. Should I? Should you? You need to go see Cambria, a real woman that knows about video games, with today's top story. I want, I want. I don't get it. How do you know nothing about video games, yet somehow you beat me at Need for Speed? Because Mama got skills, but since you can't figure that out, how about we see Megan with today's brain strain? You know what, Richie? I could really get into these video games if, like, they had some music instead of these shooting sound effects that they have. I mean, I could really get into, you know, some Nelly, some Rihanna. Then you know what, Angel? 
Then let's go see the top five downloaded songs on iTunes in today's What Are You Listening To? Angel, be quiet. I need to concentrate. How about we do your idea and go somewhere else for our date? Nope, because I don't go out with those eyes. <laughs> well, I'm Angel. I'm Richie. Don't go playing video games yet because Channel 1 News is coming up next. No, you just won. That's it. I'm out of here. How? This is your house. Over the summer, I went to a little island called Cape Breton Island, Nova Scotia. When you go to this island, it's like going back in time to the 1960s. And since this island is surrounded by water, it relies heavily on the fishing industry. In Nova Scotia, you can get so much seafood for so cheap, you can get lobsters for $2 a pound. Since there's so much farmland and open land in Cape Breton Island, it's no wonder that it relies heavily on wind power and hydroelectric electricity. And waterfalls are to thank for that. Some waterfalls are even equipped with fish ladders so that the salmon can get upstream easily during mating season without killing themselves on the rocks. Cape Breton Island is home to the only person in history that's gotten to go over Niagara Falls twice in a barrel, and I was lucky enough to meet him. So here's my exclusive interview with Mr. Dave Monday. On Cape Breton Island, there's a trail called the Cabot Trail. This trail is 181 miles long and takes you along the coastline and through the valleys. On this trail, there's a lot of wildlife, but the rarest view of all to see is a moose. On this island, there's also Peggy's Cove, which was formed many years ago by rocks that were frozen during the ice age that drifted all the way across the Atlantic and have set up on the tip of Cape Breton Island and have stayed here since. What's red and white and cute all over? That's right, LG. It's me, Richie, AKA Cupid. Keep it on the down low. Since it's February and the month of love, I've decided to earn my wings by plunging into the depths of Valentine's Day history. Now that we know more about the origins of Valentine's Day, let's get to the stuff that I'm good at, making people fall into love. Well guys, I'm up to more mischief. Valentine's Day is right around the corner, so watch out. Cupid Zero might just have you falling into the depths of love. Richie Sloan, TSC News. Richie, guess what's coming up? Why are you singing? Why are you being so mean? Because the most stressful holiday is today. Valentine's Day? Yes, Valentine's Day. I mean, I like it and all, don't get me wrong, but I have no idea what to get girls at all. I can help you. How can you help me? Um, two reasons. One, I'm a girl. And two, with Cambria Low in today's top story. So, any luck with your gift finding? Yes and no. Now I know what girls like, I don't know what to choose. Um, the most expensive, duh. Angel, I'm 13. It's not like I have a job. But you do have a brain, so why not be creative? And for you students at Lake Gibson, let's drain your brain with Megan in today's Brain Strain. Angel, what would you do if I got you a giant <laughs> basket full of vegetables? Because you know how girls are always trying to watch their weight. Me, personally, no, because I would think that you're trying to tell me that I need to get on a diet. <sighs> Fine. Then while I think of some more ideas, you students can go check out today's Healthy Helpings. I thought of something. It's cheap, but it's a thought. How about the candy grams that we get in the cafeteria? That is a good idea. So for more information, let's see today's Shark Scoop. Finally, I'm done. I can sit back, relax, and enjoy Valentine's Day. Um, no you aren't because you still haven't given me my, I mean, her gift yet. Oh well, if I do find that someone, I'll be sure to give them a gift. Okay. I'm Angel. And I'm Richie. Don't fall in love yet, because Channel 1 News is coming up next. Aliens have landed here at LG. Where? In this Cooper Science class. And they're after me, because luckily, I got the inside scoop on what they're doing here. Now let's take some specimens in for interrogation. Well, it looks like I saved this planet from the alien invasion. Just another day for yours truly. This has been Richie Sloan. TSC News. With the advancement in technology over the past decade, the whole world is able to you now with just a click of a button. And this has opened a new door of opportunity for social networking. One of the most popular examples is Facebook. People from all over the globe can log on, create their own page, post comments, and even tag friends and photos for all to see. 
With over 500 million active users using Facebook, it is sometimes hard to distinguish what is an appropriate friend relationship. So the question is, should teachers be friends students on Facebook? For now, it seems there's no definitive right or wrong answer. But if it comes down to it, teachers must decide using their own judgment. Richie Sloan, TSC News.